Actually, uh, uh, Troy and uh, Travis both would have done a lot longer sets, but they have to run off to a clan meeting. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Boyce. I, I know you don't like hearing that, but <laughs> hateful, hateful man. Uh, but uh, uh, speaking of white, uh, anyone else glad the election is over? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, the election went on way too long. It went on so long, it actually helped me uh, decide on how I feel about assisted suicide. <laughs> I was ready to kill myself. Another horrific thing that happened, of course, was Halloween uh, recently. I love Halloween. Anybody else uh, love? Yeah, yeah, I do too. It combines my three favorite things in the world. Number one, uh, decorating the house all scary and spooky. Number two, uh, watching scary movies. And number three, pretending I'm not home when there are people ringing my doorbell. <laughs> Seems appropriate, though, that Halloween fell so close to the election, because uh, that was one scary-ass group of people. Uh, did you guys vote? Did, 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 you? Ma'am, did you vote? I want to ask you who you voted for, but I think that's a little rude, so I've come up with a little system. Um, tell you what, if you voted for liberals, blink once. If you voted for uh, NDP, blink twice. If you voted for conservatives, go fuck yourself. <laughs> No, nothing? She's not fucking herself. <laughs> That's all I can get out of her. Uh, I'm gonna bring your next comic right up. Uh, and she is wonderful. I love her to death. Uh, she's brand new at this. She started just last May. And she's also a psychotherapist. So if you don't laugh, she's gonna tell you exactly what's wrong with you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage uh, the awesome, the wonderful Chris Trotter. <laughs> Hi. Oh, thank you. Wonderful to be here. Very narrow passage over there. I nearly fell on that guy's lap. And then he would have had to pay me more. So it's extremely great to be here in Quiz Pam Sis tonight. As uh, Darren said, I started in May of this year doing stand-up. I started in St. John. Now I'm in Quiz Pam Sis. I feel that Norton is just over the horizon. I'll be there. So I heard a, a new phrase today. Have you ever heard of an 11? Do you know what an, an 11 is? Besides the hottie that works uh, three cubicles over from you. But no, that's not what an 11 is. I just learned this today. An 11 is referring to the uh, vertical lines in your forehead when you frown. That's an 11. And you're not supposed to have that. It's like not attractive. And that's why I'm really glad that I don't have an 11. I have a 1,111. I blew the... Are we back on? <laughs> that was my best joke. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, where was I going to go from here? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, besides having a, a 1,111 because I'm old. Uh, yes, I'm old. I used to be a cougar. But now I'm, I've flown up to a new category. I'm a snow leopard now. <laughs> I used to weigh 115 pounds soaking wet. Now I'm neither. <laughs> I can't get pregnant anymore, I just look like I am. I wanted to do my suit jacket up, but uh, the pressure on the button was putting you people at great risk of death by projectile button. Yeah, so uh, I'm kind of like an elder now. I feel like I'm an elder, self-appointed, and so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about, uh, I, I call this piece a guide to menopause, okay? So for the guys in the room, I'd like to know, are you looking forward to the time when your women are no longer having their periods? You know, no more PMS, no more... 
E? Is it because I'm too close or what? What? Anyway. So are you looking forward to the time when your woman is no longer having periods so that no more PMS and no more not tonight honey nights? And women, are you looking forward to that, the end of menstruation, when you don't have those horrible cramps and you have to buy all those supplies and make sure they're all in the right place where you're going? Well, I have gone through menopause and I can tell you that I'm 50, I'm in my 50s and it is the happiest time of my life. Menopause, yeah, menopause occurs because the eggs have expired. And Mother Nature, in her wisdom, has slapped an out-of-order sign on the vending machine <laughs> as a kind of a quality control, you see? So what happens next is that the gears of the vending machine are still grinding and they build up great heat about a hundred times a day and night for about ten years, I'm told. <laughs> But guys, this, this, this phenomenon called hot flashes is actually going to be very fantastic for you because you can say to your friends, perhaps for the first time in your life, my woman is smoking hot in bed. <laughs> and women, there's something about menopause for you too. When you're in menopause, Movember will no longer be a spectator sport for you women. <laughs> You'll be right in there competing. That's awesome. So the World Health Organization has declared bacon as dangerous. Did you hear all about that last week? Well, I couldn't be more happy because I think bacon is delicious. And now bacon is also thrilling. Eating a BLT is now like running with the bulls in Pamplona. Eating bacon is now like walking a tightrope between the World Health Trade Organization, or the World, not the uh, World Trade Center towers. <laughs> this tower over here represents short-term pleasure. And this tower over here represents long-term colon cancer. And we're just balancing in between those two. Why is it that it's the most yummy foods that will rot your crapper? <laughs> Why can't it be kale? <laughs> kale. Kale is supposed to be healthy. I don't know about you, but when I eat kale, I have thoughts of suicide. <laughs> that can't be healthy. I'm one of those people that's so susceptible to all these trends about what we're supposed to eat now and what we're not supposed to eat now. Last year, I heard on the radio that Canadians need to eat more orange food. Well, my God, last year, I could not have eaten more orange food. I ate the cheesies, I ate the Doritos, I drank the orange crush, I had the craft dinner. Craft slices, is that even food? No, <laughs> no. See, now I'm not gonna eat them, because you said that, and I'm susceptible. I have two little kids in my life, they're my best friend's children. And uh, I said to Fiona, the little girl, Fiona, I, can I make you a grilled cheese sandwich? And she said, that would be lovely. And I said to her brother, Ali, would you like a grilled cheese? And he said, no, I want a boy cheese. <laughs> Grill, girl. Is it just me or does everybody have a disability nowadays? <laughs> Last week, I saw dyslexic Canada geese. They were flying in an inverted V. <laughs> You're supposed to fly that way. They were flying this way. No single goose could draft off any other one. In, my parents used to hear a lot, Kristen is failing math. They don't say that anymore. Do you know what they say now? Kristen has dyscalculia. Have you heard that? It's Latin for failing math. All the coolia kids have it. They don't want to calcul. What I want to know is, if you're failing shop class, do you have dyscaltulsia? <laughs> Another uh, popular disorder nowadays is oppositional defiant disorder. If some of you in the audience are as old as I am, you might remember that one as bad. <laughs> After that, it was called a spirited child. Like, he's fucking possessed. <laughs> Positional defiant disorder 
Oppositional and defiant means the same thing. That's redundant. Why are you calling it oppositional defiant disorder? I don't mean to be oppositional, but you can't say that. I think it should be given a different name. Are you with me? How about dyscalrulsia? Or dyscalskulsia? Um, I have a disability myself. It's called ADHD. Does anybody know that one? It's attention deficit. Hey, have I ever shown you that I can moonwalk? So I heard you tell, I think it was uh, Troy, that you had fun at Halloween this year. Well, I did something that I've never done before. I went to a corn maze. Has anybody been to a corn maze? Yeah. It's this huge, massive farmer's field, corn 12 feet high, and they've cut complex uh, shapes into it. I and 900 other people on the night that I went, super dark, freezing cold, mud up to here, we paid 10 bucks to wander through this farmer's field while kids from Salisbury jumped out and tried to scare us. Okay, 900 people, 10 bucks each, one night, they did it for 45 nights. I can't add that up, I have dyscalculia. But that's a lot of money. And they say there's no money to be made in agriculture, are you kidding me? So I'm gonna make a pot maze. Everybody has a half for 10 bucks, and then they wander around in my backyard, my pot maze. It's only 14 by 14. They're in there for hours. The funny thing is, there's not even a maze cut in it, it's just a plant. At Halloween, I charged $15, and I hired Stephen Harper to jump out at me. Now we're in a new season, and I think it's more dangerous, more scary than Halloween. It's a poppy season when everybody wears a very uh, sharp piece of metal on their chest. I went to hug my uncle last week, and I got a poppy right in the eye. It was bleeding all, bleeding all down my face, and it got all over this jacket. But uh, I got the blood stains out very nicely, don't you think? There's a really good dry cleaner in Ross. CSI, put up your hand, okay? Now, does anybody here not watch CSI? Put up your hand, okay. If you do not watch CSI, the St. John police would like to hear from you. You're exactly the kind of person that they're looking for. Absolutely no knowledge of the basic concept of a crime scene investigation. What were they thinking? This was the biggest case of their lives. I've tried to put myself in the St. John Police shoes, the 28 bloody shoes of the 14 St. John Police officers who went to walk and gawk through poor Dick Olin's office within the, within the first hours of his death. They used the bathroom without wearing gloves, on the scene. I guess all that blood made them have to nervous tinkle. They cleaned up the wet papers on his desk because they didn't want the out-of-town blood splatter expert to judge Dick Olin for the clutter in his office. You know how judgmental those out-of-town experts are. Excuse me, Mr. Olin, we're just gonna move your body so we can take a picture of the blood that was underneath you. Now you know why they call detectives dicks. And speaking of dicks, what is tonight called? Is it comedy with balls? Oh, yes. Yeah. So what am I doing here? <laughs> you know why I'm here? Because we wanted to show you that it does not take a lot of balls to do stand-up comedy. It doesn't even take a lot of eggs. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. You're wonderful. That was awesome. I told you you were gonna love her. Oh, goodness, that was fun. That was adventurous. I uh, just wanted to make a quick point here. Uh, in, um, in defense of the cops who trudged through all that blood and everything, uh, a lot of you may know this, men are very used to trudging sloppily through DNA evidence every day. Especially if you're single. 
Uh, but guys, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to have a little intermission so you guys can go get some drinks, get sloppy drunk, uh, maybe start a few fights, do some drugs in the bathroom. <laughs> maybe murder somebody out in the parking lot. I don't care. Uh, just be back here in about five to ten minutes, and we're going to enjoy the rest of the show. we got some killer comedy coming up, so have a good break.